Hi everyone, my name is Shauna in case you know and welcome back to another video. In today's video I'm going to be doing the school days book tag. The creator of the school days book tag will be linked down in the description below. So with this tag the directions say that you do the times of day questions and then choose any of the subject questions that seem interesting to you. So I'm going to see how this turns out. It also says you can just pick and choose as many as you want but we'll just see what happens. So for times of day, first up is first spell. Tell us about the book that got you into reading. I wish I had something cool to say like the Hunger Games or Harry Potter. Potter, but I actually got into reading when I was in like kindergarten or the first grade and so the books that actually got me into reading were the Junie B. Jones books. The author was either Barbara Park or Barbara Park. I never knew how to say her name. So my kindergarten teacher started to read Junie B. Jones to us as a read aloud and she read through a ton of the books when I was in the class and it sort of started my love for reading and then I started reading Junie B. Jones on my own and from there the rest of my love for reading is history. Junie B. Jones is about a girl who just goes to school and I think it starts off with her like in kindergarten and then I think she also goes to first grade in the books too. I'm not sure if she goes up to second grade. I don't remember. I don't think I ever read every single Junie B. Jones book in existence but I did read quite a few and Junie B. Jones is definitely what got me into reading. Break time. Which book have you most recently had to take a break from or DNF? So I don't really DNF books often so I'm just gonna go with the one that I think I most recently DNF'd which was all the way back in 20... 19, yeah, 2019. I DNF'd the book Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. Not taking a break, completely DNF'd it. I don't really take breaks in books, but Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter is extremely, extremely disturbing. And there's trigger warnings for practically everything imaginable, so how to DNF that book, could not handle it. Lunchtime, tell us about your favorite book that features food. You know, I'm not really a huge fan of food, if I'm being quite honest, so I don't really like pay attention to food and books. So the only thing that's really coming to mind right now is the Beautiful Creature series by Cami Garcia and Margaret Stoll. There's a character in this series named Ama, and she likes to bake pies and she's known for baking really good pies. This is the only one that's coming up when I'm trying to think of food and books. So definitely going with this one. I finished the series recently. It's a fairly decent series. I believe there's also food mentioned at the Ravenwood's place. So yeah, I don't know if this is what other people would choose for this prompt, but this is the only one that's coming to mind for books that feature food. In case you don't know, Beautiful Creatures is a young adult paranormal romance series and it is pretty good. Final Bell, which book have you most recently finished reading? So I finished this book last night. It is a novella and it is sort of part of this series, sort of not. So it's a book called Before the Claiming. It is by Cami Garcia and Margaret Stoll. So essentially you have this beautiful creature series and they wrote some novellas that like have to do with the series but according to Goodreads they aren't like technically part of the series. They're called like the Caster Chronicles or Beautiful Creatures, the Untold Stories or whatever. So yeah, I finished reading the third one in the Untold Stories last night and it was really good. I really enjoyed it. Don't really recommend reading the novellas unless you've read the original series because they are short and they focus primarily on the characters and content from the original series. So yeah, that is one that I read. I think I gave it four stars. Next up is homework. What was the last nonfiction book that you read and enjoyed? I don't really read nonfiction often, like I feel bad saying that. It's one of my New Year's resolutions to read more nonfiction books this year. I have not done that at all, but I think that the last nonfiction book that I read, I read last spring, so about a year ago, and that was Brown Girl Dreaming by Jacqueline Woodson. This is Jacqueline Woodson's memoir in verse, so poetry. Talks about her experience growing up. I really enjoyed it. Would highly recommend it to everyone. It's perfect for kids and adults. Highly recommend it. I really need to read more nonfiction books. I have some on my shelves. It's my news resolution. I really need to do that. I really need to get around doing that. But I have so many arcs I need to read for NetGalley. Ugh. I shouldn't have requested like 13 or however many I requested. Staff room. Tell us about a book that you go to when you need to take a breath. So when I need to take a breath, I read manga, which is the Japanese graphic novels, of course. I have some right here that I've read over the past few years. They're just really short. You can breeze through them. And a lot of times they're really light topic-wise. So 
that's the ones that I read when I need to take a breath. So some of the ones that I have here with me is One Punch Man. It was written by one and the art is by Yuzuki Murata. Really enjoyed this one. It was very light and fun. It definitely let me take a breath. Then we have this one, Attack on Titan. This is by Hajime Isayama. I probably said their name wrong. I feel like this is one of the most popular series out there so I feel like everyone knows what this is about. And then another manga that I have here with me is Maid Sama by Hiro Fujiwara probably said the name wrong. So I read these mangas when I just need to take a breath. They're so quick, so fun, so easy. Yeah. So that was all for the like times of day questions. So now I'm going to go on to the subjects. I might skip around in the subjects a little bit. I don't know. I'll have to see if I can find a book for every prompt. So first up is English. Tell us about one book you studied at school and recommend one book that you would like to add to the curriculum. Well, a book that I don't think I've talked about much on here that I read for school was Of Mice and Men. No clue who the author is right now. I am so sorry about that. I studied that one in the 10th grade. It was really quick and easy to read really affected me mentally with some of the stuff that was happening at the end, considering I was just being diagnosed with having mental illness issues when I had to read this book for school. But for classic, it's really easy to understand and there were some good discussions that happened because of this book in the class. And a book that I would like to add to the curriculum. So I'm gonna go with another Jacqueline Woodson book to this. Jacqueline Woodson is an incredible author. I highly recommend checking out her works if you haven't already. And this one that I'm choosing is If You Come Softly. I would honestly use this to replace Romeo and Juliet in schools. Why do we need to learn Shakespeare? Like what good does it do? If you want a heartbreaking story with romance, if You Come Softly is your book. It has some really, really important conversations and topics in this book. It is about a Jewish girl who falls in love with a black boy and some tragedies strike, some struggles happen. Very good book, so much more useful to modern day teens than Romeo and Juliet. Like why couldn't this have just replaced Romeo and Juliet in school? But yes, if I were a high school teacher, I would definitely put this one in the curriculum. And it's really short so you can breeze through it easily. Highly recommend that everyone checks out this book. Next up is math or maths. Here in the US we say math, not maths. And this question is, how do you rate your books? I have a system, it's pretty simple, pretty laid out over on Goodreads. I try to avoid half star ratings. So starting off with five stars, that means that I loved the book. Once you go down to four stars, it means I really liked the book. Go down to three stars, it either means that I liked the book or I thought the book was just okay. And then two stars is I didn't like the book and one star is I hated the book. Fairly simple, don't really have much more to that. I like to keep it simple and then I elaborate in my thoughts in my written review or my verbal review if I make a video about it. So yeah. Next up is science. Which book couple do you think has the best chemistry? I think that the couple with the best chemistry is... Ember and Chase from the Article 5 trilogy. This is the second book in the series. Ember and Chase are just like one of the few couples that were actually canon in the book and I was reading for them the whole time. They are just so sweet and you can tell that they're clearly like in love with each other. There's so much chemistry there. They're friends to lovers. And this book is a dystopian series, so it is a little bit, like, gritty, but if you want it to die for romance and you're okay with, like, dystopian stuff, definitely check out this series. Next up is Geography. Describe a book that has a strong sense of place or great world building. So We Hunt the Flame by Hafsa Faisal had really great world building in it. It's one of the things that I really liked most about this series. In this book and the second book, which is called We Free the Stars, there's a lot of traveling going on and a lot of things about, like, the different, like, cities and stuff in this world and so the world is like very well described, very thoroughly thought out and there's just great world building that really keeps you like stuck in the world and like captivated by it and there's even this really fun map in the book to show you the world. So definitely going with this one for geography. In case you don't know, We Hunt the Flame is a duology that is young adult fantasy that has an enemies to lover romance and I highly recommend it. I'm gonna skip history because I don't read historical fiction that much and I'm not sure if I have three books for this prompt. So next up we're going to Religious Studies, which is which book is one that you always come back to? This will come as no surprise to anyone, but I'm going with Harry Potter. This is the third book because this is the one that's closest to me and it's also the one that's closest to me that's fairly light because I don't feel like holding up one of the later books in the series right now that's really heavy. Harry Potter is a series that I always come back to. It has brought me so much joy, it has shaped so much of my life, and I really love this series. It's also convenient that I'm holding Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban up because for the past few years I've been working on a Prisoner of Azkaban fanfiction, so I've had to like reread chapters to get the scenes correct and stuff. So yeah, I really need to work on that fanfiction more. I've sort of slowed down on fanfiction writing lately. But yeah, I always come back to Harry Potter. It's also ironic that I'm choosing this for religious studies considering that so many religious people 
hate Harry Potter and think that it's sacrilegious or anti-religious or whatever you want to call it. I'm gonna skip PE. Next up is music. Which reading format do you think has the best rhythm for reading? When I think of rhythm, I think of like things that I can actually like hear. So I'm gonna choose audiobooks for this. I think audiobooks have a really good rhythm, especially if you get a good narrator. One of my favorite narrators so far is Christian Coulson. He has a great rhythm when he's reading. I think that books in verse also sometimes have a good rhythm. So yeah, choosing those two, but mostly audiobooks. And I'm gonna skip drama, art, and modern foreign languages so that is all for this video if you enjoyed the video feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to me if you haven't already all of my other social media will be linked down in the description below all of the goodreads pages the books that i mentioned in this video will also be linked down in the description below so you can find out more about them and check them out again take creator will be linked down in the description below the description will just basically have a ton of info that you should check out if you'd like to do this tag consider yourself tagged and i will see all of you in my next video goodbye